All right, so here I finally got the, uh, <clears throat> the beta installed that fixes two things, which we had a bug to where you could only, no matter what time control you picked, it would only let you play 10 minute games. And now you can actually use the clock. So you can see just the clock without having to look at the board. So you can more focus on the act, what, not see the digital board, but you, now you can focus solely on the physical board. So I'm gonna throw a screenshot up right now if you want to join the beta. What you do is you go in the, in the Google App Store, I don't know how it works in the Apple App Store. Um, go to the actual um, App Store, uh, to the actual app. And then if you scroll down, you'll see a little thing that says join the beta. On my screen, it says leave because I already joined the beta, but you just, it should be obvious. Just click join and then back out of that and then go back in. Maybe you have to do it once or twice and all of a sudden it'll say beta in parentheses beside the name and then you can install it. So, all right. So first of all, let me back up here a little bit. I'm going to see, because I know some people are on my friends list that uh, from the channel. So let me see if there's anybody online. All right. So I did have a game started with... Uh, let me see, select friend, Knight Bridge. I don't know if he's online or not. And it appears that you can play, let's see. Let me see if he's online. Because I know last night when I tried, uh, he was online, but I don't know um, board connection. Oh, that's right, let me turn the board on, sorry about that. Got a little ahead of myself there. For some reason, I thought I cut the board on. Let's back up. Just let it do its thing and I'll just hit retry. Retry, there we go. So let's see what happens here. If I don't get a game here in a few seconds, I'm just going to back out and, um, you know, just go to random and just see if I can get a game. Because I think last night, because again, maybe sometime it, when you put it, you know, the people to the friend list, I'm not sure what the dynamic is of this pinging to the server. But then again, we'll, we'll give it a few more seconds. And if not, um, it says waiting for game to start. Take this back out. Okay, let's just hit cancel. Uh, okay, color white. All right, let's hit play. I'm gonna do it one more time. And again, it's not really any issue with the friends list. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that more or less, again, like I said, it's not really an issue with the friends. It's I think that when you have and you add people to it, they have to be online. I don't I, don't, I, I, I can't tell if he's online or not. So that's probably the thing. All right. So let's just hit cancel so we can go back and we'll challenge a random opponent. All right. So we're going to do a custom 5-5 five, five game. I'm going to try to play white and we're going to hit play. Hopefully we get a game and how you change from the board to the clock and just swipe to the left i believe to the left or right but I, I normally just swipe to the right and if you go like this bam there you go you have your clock now so there's a new system i've been playing lately i've been trying to play the elephant a little bit um i don't i, I don't really think you should play the elephant necessarily against e4 i mean e5 but i'm just saying what happens here so I don't think technically it's an elephant. It might be called something else at this point. But technically you play the elephant against this, like a, what, it, what you call an anti-Sicilian. And um, and yeah, that's sort of, a, this is sort of like a Philidor defense I think he's playing. Okay, so this would be, end up being just like an elephant would be, just we just transitioned. Because normally when they give you this, where you can go E5 as white, you should you should take that. Because now it's a better version of a French because now you can put your knight on C3, which is pretty good. All right. And all we have to do is just now just uh, develop normally. Let me see here because that pawn, let me see. Because a pin on what you call, so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to stop that pin. I'm going to go here. Because that pin can be slightly annoying. It's not too annoying, but it can be slightly annoying. So I'm gonna go here first to stop him from going bishop to g4. Again, I, I again as you if you follow my channel, you know that I am a d4 player, but um, I've been going um, uh, e5 for I mean 
I mean, I play E4, obviously. Or I know how to play it. But the big thing is that the reason why I don't play E4 that often because it's just um, much easier for people to learn openings and play. And it, re it really gets, you know, obnoxious with, with, um, with, with people just playing main lines. And so anyway, that's the situation. Oh, now that's interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to let's go here and do this here. Come and take his knight. We take my pawn. So anyway, I, I, I've been trying to the, I think the elephant is probably one of the ways to sort of, um, you know, get around playing a whole lot of, uh, you know, theory. Not well, not really. I mean, there's a lot of theory with Alvin, but you don't play typically like more or less the main type lines or what have you. You can you can kind of deviate and transition to say, for example, I got a better version of a French here or somewhat something like a French where I, my knights are on the best squares and I had pawns on um, D45, which is, you know, just again, it just makes your play much freer. So right now, when I, I'm going to take this with the knight. Now I'm actually threatening a queen check on um, h5. I mean, again, honestly, I got to say they're not playing this opening very well, but uh, they're not necessarily playing bad either. Okay. So, yeah, because he, because now this check right here, that's a typical motif here to where, like, if he pushes the pawn, you're just going to take the pawn with your knight. And basically, he has taken, and you win the exchange and a pawn, actually. Let's see. Yeah, that's really the only move he got. I mean, he could pull his... He can... Oh, well, technically, no. In this case, he can go knight f6. I forgot about that. Yes, that that is true. Um, so again, what we could do is we could just go, we could just go, um, let's see, what is the best route? Oh, I do. I got a check here. Never mind. I still win this change. Yeah. In this case, it went this change because I have this queen check here. So my, my, my plan stands. And actually win it with check. That's pretty amazing. Oh, wait a minute. He might be made it because oh, I think that is made because he can't pull his queen out because he loses queen. Well, no, 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 no. Never mind. His king goes to F7. Never mind. I thought for some reason in my mind he was going to F8. And that was his only square. My bishop on C1 would have been made on H6. All right. So anyway, I win this with here with check. But always do what Laska says. Whenever you see a good move, look for a better one. Um, but being that this is blitz, um, we're just going to do the obvious thing and just take right here. We're not playing any games. And again, we got to go ahead and castle or something here to make sure we don't lose our king. I mean, lose our. Now, the only he do got a little play because he has. Um, because he has his. Um. You know, because he has this file open, the G file open, but I think that's worth the exchange in this pawn in this case because I got a no, I, I got more pieces in play. Um, if he takes my knight with his bishop, I mean, he's taking one of his best pieces. I mean, if, he, if I was him, I just backed the bishop up to G. Yeah, he did it right. That's what I would have done. Back the bishop up. Yep. Yeah. So, see, this is where you got to be careful at. You got to figure out what you're going to do. Yeah, I got a plan here. And he's going to, yeah. And I'm hoping he bring his rook over because then I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm going to get my queen back somewhat centralized. If we bring his rook to the e-file, I'm going to get back centralized with queen to f3 because then I'll be hitting his pawn. So now he's kind of threatening to take on h3. But this is where I just go here and kind of, Stop that threat 
because if he takes H3, I'm just going to take my queen. And now I'm actually threatening a pawn of his. And then I'm threatening to um, just consolidate a bit because I'm going to just move my king over so that I won't have to worry too much about that. But he does have some pressure on that file, I got to say. I mean, that, 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 is, that is the truth. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and take this right here. Ooh, well, no, I was about to say he could pin my knight with his bishop, but I have the move queen takes knight check and trading both those pieces and just getting rid of all that pressure. So because he could put some pressure because if I was him, I would have just brought my rook over to the G file because, well, that's that's the grace of him having this horrible position. OK, the opponent resigned. Um I didn't I didn't have that open. But anyway, you see, he resigned here. And basic play, again, I'm pretty sure he's losing um, no matter what he does. But instead of going rook to e8, I would have probably went here. And um Oh yeah, I see. If he okay, instead of go okay, let me see something here. If I went where was I? I was here. Instead of going here, he could have went here. And then he could have been threatening, for example, something like this. Is I can't take it because of mate. So he could have, you know, he slowly say got his not got his stuff in the better positions here. Like for example, like he could have like then brought this bishop here. Because if I takes the bishop, for example, he takes back. I can't take. I can't take the knight because of mate right here. So he could have had. He could have prolonged. Um, um, some of his some some of this here and um, but again I was had this pin to the king but at the same time he still could have taken this here so I could have probably just pushed this no not push that up because of the bishop he actually actually now that I look at he actually had some play here actually hmm actually he was threatening now at this point to take this so anyway um now, I think that was a pretty interesting game. If I was them, I would have kept playing because, again, they, they had, um, I think they had a lot of play left. But I think that I, I, I think that I, what I would have done was some kind of way for some trades at some point. Even if I would have just pushed this and just gave him the exchange, like if he takes this, for example. Um, well, that's right. This would have been hanging, so he can't really do so. He had to do something about that. If I go here and then he takes this, then now I can take this because there's no more mate right here. So, yeah, I think I had some play to avoid um, some of the activity he had. It was just a matter of time because his king is really exposed. Once I once I get in a couple of good checks to kind of chase his king around, get a rook on an open foul, I, th I think I would have been OK, even if I would have just gave the exchange back. I mean, I was still would have been up at least a pawn with an attack. And these pawns over here would have been very weak. And this knight was poised to hop in here. So anyway, good game. Um, that's it. So confirm that the 10 minute bug is fixed and you can actually now swipe the um, board. Let me see, can you do it to the right and left? Just to the right. You can swipe to the right and it shows you the clock only. So therefore you can just see the clock and focus on your game.